Forget about Ghana, Nigeria, Morocco, Algeria, and Egypt. All four of the mentioned nations are relatively newcomers when it comes to money. The first gangster economy in Africa was in South Africa. Despite losing ground to Nigeria, South Africa remains the continent's most prosperous country. The second richest nation in Africa is South Africa. This nation is what I like to call old money rich. The nation is regarded as African royalty, not merely because of Nelson Mandela. No, since you probably weren't aware that South Africans constructed car plants before Nigerians even had a national anthem. The only African nation with enough banks to host its own World Cup in 2010. And if you have any knowledge of the World Cup, you know it is costly. In terms of being safe and ready to drink, South Africans are so sassy and fancy that their water is ranked third best in the world. They outperformed even the United States, China, Germany, and England on that scale. But before we dig into all the details of why South Africa is so rich, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the African web channel so you won't miss out on our next video. Also, press the notification bell. Resource and power. It is commonly believed that the more a nation is wealthy, the more natural resources it possesses. Several different minerals are abundant in South Africa. They have iron ore, platinum, manganese, chromium, copper, uranium, silver, beryllium, titanium, diamond, and gold reserves. It only has a few commercially viable petroleum deposits. Still, it does own some natural gas off the southern coast, and two sizable factories in the Free State and Pumalanga provinces use coal to make synthetic fuel. Even though manufacturing still contributes a higher percentage of South Africa's GDP than mining does and has been doing so for decades, the mining industry remains the backbone of the country's economy because mining-focused holding firms invest in other business forms. As a result, the mining industry makes a sizable annual contribution to South Africa's economy. The most significant mineral in South Africa is gold, which is also one of the top producers globally with substantial reserves. Although prices have never matched the incredible highs of the early 1970s, production is gradually dropping. Coal is another priceless mineral commodity from South Africa. Most large known deposits are located at easily mineable depths in the Pumalanga and Northern Free State High Belt. The main purposes of coal production are for export to East Asia and Europe as well as for the production of energy. Platinum and chromium, mined at locations like Rustenburg and Steelport in the Northeast and becoming more commercially significant, are produced in the greatest quantities in the world by South Africa. Large platinum group and chromium mineral resources are primarily found north of Pretoria. Most of the significant iron ore and manganese reserves are found in the Northern Cape Province, and sands containing titanium are widespread throughout the eastern coast. The nation also manufactures limestone, fluor spar, nickel, copper, antimony, vanadium, palladium, nickel, and uranium. Diamond mining is now undertaken in several locations, despite previously centered around Kimberley. De Beers Consolidated Mines Limited, one of the largest mining companies in the world, dominates the South African diamond sector. South Africa generates almost all of its electricity thermally, primarily from coal. Eskom produces most of the nation's electricity from large stations in Pumalanga. A tiny fraction of the nation's energy requirements are met by coal-derived synthetic fuel and imported oil refined at the ports or transported via pipeline to Seiselberg, a significant inland refinery. Although there are government-developed projects on several rivers, the hydroelectric potential is modest. The plans to import energy from Kahora Bassa, Mazam, and rivers in the Lesotho Highlands on the Zambezi River are more significant. Several Southern African nations receive South Africa's electrical exports. Exporting energy to foreign countries also increases South Africa's wealth. Manufacturing The production of textiles, metals, and chemicals, as well as the food processing industry, are South Africa's primary manufacturing industries. The foundation for significant activity in meat, fish, and fruit canning, sugar refining, and other processing is provided by agriculture and fisheries. 
These products are exported to foreign nations more than 50%. With its humble beginnings in producing explosives for mining, the chemical industry has grown to be enormous and complicated. The coal-based petrochemical sector produces a variety of polymers, resins, and industrial chemicals. The region's iron and steel manufacturing companies supply a large portion of the raw materials used by the metal sector, which is based in Gauteng. Manufacturers of aluminum, primarily in KwaZulu Natal, are supplied with imported materials. Automobiles, ships, building supplies, electronics, and various other goods, most notably armaments, are all produced in South Africa. Yet, manufacturing non-military goods has started to diversify the arms sector. As military sanctions were lifted, the post-apartheid administration supported a contentious arms export trade. Foreign capital has played a significant role in manufacturing. It multiplied in the 1960s and the early 1970s, but in the 1980s, it either grew very slowly or shrank. As mining steadily decreases, manufacturing and its need for foreign finance become progressively more crucial for national growth. Exports make up about one-fourth of manufacturing production. The Financial System of South Africa The South African Reserve Bank, which serves as the sole issuing body for the RAND, the country's official currency, is central to South Africa's well-developed financial system. It creates and carries out monetary policy and overseas currency exchange operations. There are numerous recognized banking institutions, including merchant, savings, investment, and discount banks, some of which focus on commercial banking. One such bank was established to support development projects. It is called the Development Bank of Southern Africa. More than two dozen insurance companies, private pensions, provident funds, and others play important roles in the financial sector. There is a thriving capital market centered on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Trading with other countries. South Africa's economy is sensitive to changes in the global economy because it relies on foreign commerce. Precious metals have been the main exports. Agricultural products and military hardware also play a significant influence. Even exporting electricity to nearby nations is one of South Africa's exports. Chemicals, chemical-related products, and automobiles are the main imports into the nation. China, America, Germany, and Japan are South Africa's top trading partners. Regional trade is becoming more significant in South Africa, mainly through the Southern African Development Community. South African businesses have attempted to increase investment in other African nations after the end of apartheid, particularly in the mining and business sectors. The Tourism Sector The South African economy also depends heavily on tourism. Even while African countries account for most visitors, the number of travelers from Europe and the Americas is rising. The national and international parks are among the various tourist attractions. Border crossings from South Africa into other African countries are becoming more accessible. The wine areas of the Western Cape Province, Table Mountain, and Robben Island, named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999, are just a few of the most well-liked tourist destinations. Both ecotourism and village tourism, in which visitors can learn about the traditional rural culture, are growing in popularity. Air transport and shipping. With more than 400 airports, South Africa is the largest airport owner in Africa. State-owned South African airlines and several private rivals run the inland air services, including passenger and freight flights. All major cities are connected by air services, which makes it simple to get from one location to another as quickly as possible. As a result, it is simpler to facilitate trade and business. While international service is available all over the world, South African airlines and many other foreign airlines fly between South Africa and all of its neighbors. The country's primary domestic and international air transportation hub is O.R. Tambo International Airport near Johannesburg. However, airports in Cape Town and Durban are becoming more crucial as international gateways. South African Ports Operations and National Ports Authority, two Transnet companies, are the owners and managers of every port in South Africa. Eight large ports may be found in South Africa. 
By facilitating imports and exports, these numerous ports enable global trade. The main port is Durban, which services most of KwaZulu, Natal, Pumalanga, and Northern Free State. The only river port in South Africa, East London, Port Elizabeth, and Cape Town manages mixed traffic for their nearby hinterlands and farther off places. These ports handle cargo entering and leaving other African nations, such as Zimbabwe, Zambia, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. In addition, several regions of the northern provinces are served by Maputo, the port closest to Johannesburg. Moreover, new ports have been created in locations like Saldanha Bay, north of Cape Town, in an excellent natural harbor where iron ore is exported, and Richards Bay, which handles coal exports on the north coast of KwaZulu-Natal. Agriculture No African nation can claim that agriculture has not boosted its GDP, and South Africa is no exception. The country places a high priority on its agricultural sector. Although having relatively limited access to land and water, it contributes significantly to local economic growth and produces a sizable part of exports. More than one-tenth of the country's land is arable, with most of the well-watered, productive soils around the KwaZulu-Natal coast and the western Cape River valleys. Corn, wheat, sugarcane, sorghum, ground nuts, citrus, and other fruits, and tobacco are some main crops. Cattle, pigs, sheep, goats, and goats are raised for food and other items. Important foods include wool and meats like beef, lamb, mutton, and goat. Production of dairy products, including butter, cheese, and eggs, is also considerable, especially near the major cities. The east and southeast, which are more humid, have significant areas under plantation to complement the sparsely wooded land and limited timber resources. The construction sector, which predominantly employs brick, concrete, and steel, is mainly supplied by the forest industry, which also provides building timbers, mining timber, and pulpwood for paper and board mills. The principal fishing grounds are off the western and southern coasts. Pilchard and moss banker are the primary fish caught from the beach, whereas kinklip, Agullus sole, Cape Hake, and Cabelju are among the species caught from offshore trawling. In all honesty, South Africa is economically and historically superior to the rest of the continent. Nigeria today carries the economic baton after South Africa has unquestionably retreated in recent years. Yet, I won't count out the sleeping giant, and I certainly won't bet against them waking up to resume their prosperity and greatness. What do you think about our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, hit the subscribe button before you go. Thank you for watching.